Well, hello, welcome to another episode of Jim's Home and Garden. Okay, so our, for our second um, family of vegetables, I'd like to talk about, or fruit should I say, I'd like to talk about gourds. Now, gourds are quite a, um, a big family of um, um, fruits which can be grown, you know, sort of in, in pretty much every continent of the world. They are, um, by definition, it's basically a vine um, which, which, which has um, fruit, fruit bearing flowers on it, which is effectively the definition of the plant. And uh, it's, it's all one family. And, and in there, there are many different types of um, fruits that, that are edible and there are quite a few that are, are also not edible as well. Um, to give you some examples of what gourds are, to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. So in the, in the gourd family, we've got things like cucumber, melon, squash, pumpkins, bottle gourds, birdhouse gourds, uh, marrows, courgettes or um, zucchini. Uh, we have gherkins, ivory gourds, um, um, loofahs, um, okra, uh, woolly bear gourds, um, long bottle gourds, um, spoon bottle gourds, hedgehog gourds and snake gourds and the list just goes on. I mean there are many different types. Even just saying cucumber, there's got to be, you know, a hundred different varieties of cucumber that, um, you, you know, out there that have been grown at some point or not. There are most certainly 20 or 30 um, varieties of cucumber which are sort of commercially available to the, um, you, know, you know, to the garden grower. Melons, as you know, there are many different types of melons, you know, the watermelon, honeydew melon, you know, so I've just given you kind of the main groups, really, of, um, of, of gourds there, but that kind of gives you an idea of, um, you know, how many gourds there are out there, and they are all related to each other. Um, to the point where, if you are growing gourds in your garden and you want to save the seed, which I'll come on to again later, um, you need to be careful what you grow near each other. Now, last year I grew um, pumpkins and squashes, uh, butternut squashes, and courgettes in very close proximity to each other. Now, because I've done that, I will not be able to save the seed from any of those because the likelihood is what you're going to get is something like that. Now, what this is, is um, the product of somebody saving seed from um, a pumpkin plant uh, which was grown next to a courgette plant so this is actually a hybrid between a pumpkin and a courgette and so you know if you put any of these gourds together the seed that you get from them um, will not come true the following year only when you've got um, only when you've got that single plant in in that area can you almost guarantee that the um, that the that the seed will be true to that you know that particular plant so if you've grown pumpkins for example um, you know you need to grow um, no other gourds anywhere close to that pumpkin plant um, a apart from another um, another pumpkin plant of the same variety um, you know to guarantee that the seeds will be pumpkins that are that are inside the pumpkin um, fruits that grow on it uh, if you've got somebody who's you know within I don't know uh, 20 or 30 yards who's grown a courgette plant the the bees and the insects which will which will pollinate the plant may well go onto the courgette plant and then come over onto your pumpkin plant and then cross pollinate it and then you're going to get something between a pumpkin and a courgette so you know to get um, true um, gourds what you really do need to do um, if you can't guarantee that there's no other gourds growing anywhere near you is to buy the seed every year so that's what I typically do I'll buy the seed fresh every year and I don't save it from the um, I don't save it from the pumpkins or the squashes because for the same reason you get this problem where you get crossbreeding and this is this is a cross between as I say a pumpkin and a courgette but it's a neither a pumpkin or a courgette so it's very edible you know you can most certainly eat it but how you'd eat it I'm not quite sure because obviously those two two things are reasonably different so 
What are the benefits from um, eating gourds? Um, now there are many uses for gourds, um, eating is only one of them and I'll come on to that um, later, but um, obviously the main reason that we grow gourds is to eat them. So what are the main um, benefits? So um, they are a very healthy vegetable, um, uh, sorry, a fruit in fact, to eat. Um, and what they actually do is, uh, the first thing is they will, um, they will regulate blood pressure, they will help with the digestive um, system, so if you've got any digestive problems, eating you know, some kind of gourd will help with that. Um, they also help with diabetes, they help with, um, if you take the leaves and the, the roots from a gourd plant, they can also help with asthma and uh, bronchitis. Um, they are um, they are also um, helping against um, cell formation and the mutation of um, DNA. So therefore, um, eating gourd plant is also like an anti-cancer um, type um, food to eat as well. So from that point of view, they are really good. Also, they're full of antioxidants, so that protects against um, radical um, damage of cells, um, which which then leads to this sort of anti um, um, mutating type property which which again is the is the cancer side of things they're also an antibiotic they also contain antibiotic properties and um, they're also uh, because of that they're very good for killing um, bacteria and also um, things like urinary tract infections they're very good for that as well uh, the roots and the leaves believe it or not can be used as a, um, a remedy for scabies or even leprosy um, and they basically they maintain the um, that they're, they're really good in maintaining a healthy heart um, they reduce cholesterol um, they're very good for weight loss so I guess I should eat more of them and um, they relieve stress um, and anxiety so they are a really good um, group of fruits to grow um, in you know in Europe for a number of reasons apart from that you know there are the other of obvious reasons other than um, you know the obvious ones like putting cucumber on your eyes uh, which will you know sort of rejuvenate your eyes um, eating them will also make your hair um, smoother and your nails stronger um, and also um, it soothes muscle and joint pain and um, it keeps your kidneys your renal system um, healthy as well so they are really good healthy fruits to eat and they're so easy to grow and, uh, and I'll come on to why later but they are because of the size of the seed most of the seed from gourds are quite big so they're ideal to um, you know for children to grow because the seeds are big they're easy to handle you know you can put them into a pot and then the plant grows quite quickly you know the leaves are nice and big and so it gets the interest in children as well so they're really good from that perspective as well apart from eating them and and sort of um, you know sort of putting them on your eyes and stuff like that there are a, a whole raft of other reasons why people have grown gourds over the centuries and just to give you a few ideas you know there are quite a sort of few practical uses for them apart from food. So the first one is obviously um, a container of bottle and a lot of the gourds are actually called bottle gourds because they are in the shape of a bottle. For example this one here um, is a, a birdhouse gourd which is effectively a bottle gourd and as you can see if you let that dry out which is why this is looking brown at the top if you let that dry out obviously I've got larger ones there but um, you can dry this out and what you end up getting is a hard shell on the outside and the inside becomes hollow uh, which is the more fleshy part which you normally eat um, and then you can cut the top off this and put a you know you know some kind of cork or whatever in the top and you can quite easily carry water um, in those so that's why they're called bottle gourds because they've been used for centuries as bottles so well before we were able to um, make glass bottles or, or um, um, pitcher um, containers and stuff like that Gourds were used to carry water through deserts and, and you know whatever else, you know, fresh water. They're also um, used for cleaning. Obviously, loofah, uh, loofahs are um, also a gourd. So if you dry a loofah out, you get that sort of um, spongy type um, um, structure, if you like, which can be used as a uh, exfoliant for the skin and stuff like that. They're also used in exactly the same way as bottles. If you dry them out, they can also be used as floats. So for many centuries these have been used for like fishing floats so you 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 know you grow your gourds and then let them dry out they become um, buoyant because they're full of air and uh, they can then be tied onto fishing nets and used as um, effectively floats to keep the nets uh, above water 
Um, they're also used to make um, also used to make things like bird houses, which obviously there's the bird house gourd, which you saw me making last year. And also they're um, they're also grown for many um, reasons of being decorative, because they are quite um, beautiful looking um, things, uh, particularly some of the others which I'll come on to later. But uh, you know you do get some very um, beautiful looking um, gourds, things like the things like the uh, the woolly bear gourd looks like a um, like a sort of thistle type. You know it's got lots of sort of hairs on it, so it looks quite hairy. They're about about sort of this big. And they're quite sort of furry in, in, in you know in their appearance. And other other people grow um, bottle gourds and birdhouse gourds also for decorative purposes. And uh, you know you can carve them as as they dry, they form a hard skin, which can be carved. And uh, you know you can put all sorts of shapes in and paint them and all the rest of it. So the, you know there's lots of different uses for them. But what I'm talking about predominantly is growing them to eat. Um, so those are the those are the benefits of gourds. And uh, you know they are um, very very easy to grow um, from from seed. Now every gourd pretty much is is around ninety six percent water. So as you can imagine, to um, to a gourd plant, they they're very um, reliant on water. You need to keep them watered. They don't like sitting in water because um, they're quite prone to damping off. So where the if that's the ground level and that's the um, the stalk run at the ground, if there's water sitting ground. The bottom of the stalk, the stalk can rot, and um, you know things like cucumbers are very prone to that. So you need to be careful that they're not sitting in water. But what they do need is a really good supply of um, water to, um, you know, to you know to maintain growth and everything. Now, what's in them um, is, um, you know, there are there are quite a lot of vitamins and vitamins and stuff like that. So they're very rich. Um, um, in, in uh, vitamin C, vitamin K, vitamin A and vitamin B. Um, they're also very low in saturated fat, so they're healthy in that perspective. They're also a good source of zinc, um, thiamine, iron, uh, magnesium, manganese, and also calcium if you eat the seeds as well. Um, obviously, you know, you can eat the flesh and also the seeds. The seeds are very high in calcium. So that's also a good, um, rich source of um, calcium. Um, to it, which will obviously strengthen your bones and your teeth, etc., and your, and your um, nails and everything else. So that's, in essence, very quickly. That's 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 why gourds are a really good um, um, plant to grow in the garden. Now, coming on to how to grow it, uh, they're all pretty much the same. Um, they're all um, uh, they all either grow across the ground, um, so you need a reasonable um, size piece of ground, things like um, butternut squashes and um, pumpkins and that do require quite a large area, um, possibly about four meters squared, um, you know, so two meters by two meters, um, enough room to um, sort of go and to sort of grow out because they do get quite big. They also throw out runners which can go for five, six, seven meters. So, uh, you know, you need to leave a reasonable amount of room for them. Um, others like um, things like the uh, the woolly bear gourds and the the ivory um, gourds, bottle gourd, most bottle gourds, and the birdhouse gourd, which is again another bottle gourd. Um, they they tend to climb up things. So what you need is either some kind of frame, or um, some fence, or a tree, or something that it can grow up because it likes to go up and then and then it'll bear its fruits um, off the flowers as it's as it's grown up the structure. So Dependent on the gourd, what you need to do is read the um, the, uh, the 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 seed packet and make sure that you've got the right environment for it. But what I will say is, um, when you go to grow them, um, always always start them off in a um, a pot, which is um, I always I sort of typically grow mine in these in, in these sort of pots like that, uh, which is sort of a sort of four inch square pot, and I typically get a good um, success rate by growing them in there. You need to grow them in a You need to start them off germination-wise um, in a um, reasonably warm environment. Uh, you know, you, you need sort of 15 degrees to sort of germinate them, and you need to keep them wet, but don't don't overwater them. They need to be well drained, because as I say, you know, you do get this um, problem with them damping off when the you know particularly when they're young plants. So you can um, grow um, 
the, you know, some growth plants and they'll, they'll basically get to here and then all of a sudden they'll rot off at the bottom, which is the exact reason why I always buy my cucumber plants rather than planting the seed, because I find that if I buy them, um, they won't sort of damp off. I've grown many cucumber plants from seed um, and I've, I've kind of got them to grow up to here and then they suddenly damp off with a cold snap of weather or whatever. Um, they, they, you know, they tend to rot off. So I typically buy my cucumber plants. All the other gourds that I grow, I always grow from seed. Um, so as soon as you've got them um, established, you'll get the two seed leaves coming out. And the seed leaves are quite big, big round leaves. And then they'll, they'll sort of grow to kind of four inches high. And then what you need to do then is wait till you've got the second set of leaves, which are the first shaped leaves, which are more sort of um, angular, if you like. And uh, dependent on the type of gourd, they'll be different sizes. But um, as soon as you get the second set of leaves coming out, um, you are then, assuming that it's frost free outside, you are then okay to plant them out into the position. Wherever you plant them, the ground needs to be very fertile. Um, what you need in there is lots of carbon matter, you know, sort of um, compost, wood chip, anything rotted down, um, straw, things like that. Um, um, from muck because that will that will hold the moisture in the ground and it'll also when you water it it'll soak the water up and then it can release it slowly back to the plant as it as the ground dries out. Um, so always dig in loads of compost down into the ground, get it as fertile as you possibly can do. And then as soon as um, you've got the ground all prepared, um, plant your plant in there and then Pretty much, you then leave it to it and let it grow on. Obviously, if it's growing up a frame, what you need to do is put your framework in there and, and possibly tighten a few places as it's growing along. What they will do is send out little little tendrils and um, sort of hold onto the framework. Uh, many of the bottle gourds and the bird house gourds and things like that will send out little um, little tendrils coming out to hold onto the framework. What you might need to do is put a bit of string in there to start with, just to get it going. But um, as soon as it's established itself, they should then send out those, which is what it, what it grubs on with. Um, exactly like a, any other vine plant, like a bean run a bean plant, you know, they, they send out these things to hold on to the um, structure. And then just keep it watered, basically. Um, the, other, the other tip I can give is what you, what you will need to do is if it's not looking very good, uh, you know, if the plant starts to show um, signs that it's stressed, um, and it will do that by... Um, It'll do that by, the leaves will start to go um, like a pale yellow colour. What you need to do is get some Epsom salts. Now in Epsom salts there are a number of things that will help, but um, predominantly um, magnesium. And this is, this is typically, there's not enough magnesium in the ground, so just a spoonful of that in your watering can when you're watering them. And what that will do is it will enrich the soil and then it will bring the plant back up to its health. And so look at the leaves, the leaves will tell you a lot about a plant. If the um, if the leaves are starting to go yellow, that means it's lacking something. Um, it's typically not water, uh, or it could be possibly too much water. Um, so if it's if the leaves are going yellow, it's either too much sun or it's lacking some mineral out of the ground. Um, and watering it by, uh, you know, putting some Epsom salts in your um, watering can and watering it on will then enrich the ground, and then you should see the colour, the deep green coming back into the leaves and the plant being healthy and growing on. So those are the best. What I'll do now is I'll show you some seeds so you can see what they look like, and I'll, I'll show you a quick example of how to plant it to start them off. Okay, so what I'll do now is I'll just show you um, some examples. So this is the... I'm going to cut this one up so you can actually see the seed in it. Now, the way to store um, um, gourds is to basically keep them frost free in a reasonably dry environment. Now, this is a butternut squash that I grew last year. And as you can see, it's in perfectly good condition. And these will store like this, um, you know, for a good six months in your garage. Um, and all you need to do, obviously, you can see this one started to shrivel a little bit, which is, which is natural, it's just losing a bit of moisture. But as long as you leave a bit of the stalk on there, and make sure that you know you haven't got any mould or bacteria on that end there and on this end here. This will store quite nicely in a garage where it's where, where it's frost free, you know, not too um, you know not too cold. Because uh, obviously these are sort of ninety six percent water. So if they freeze, the the the, the ice crystals will form in inside and it'll start to break down the uh, the structure of the of the fruit so it'll start to rot so that's a reasonable size uh, butternut squash obviously they do get bigger than that I haven't got the biggest one that I grew last year but uh, as you can see here that's that's a you know really good sized one and um, that's around sort of 14 15 inches long and I, I did have some that were 
uh, probably half as long again and probably half as wide again as these so butternut squashes can get quite big if you grow them well um, <clears throat> but let's have a look at the, the seeds. Now the seeds, obviously it's a fruit so it forms from a flower on the vine and then obviously um, that, that was originally the flower there um, that, that sort of stalk part there so that was originally the flower and then um, the flower will then be pollinated and then this, this fruit will form so all gourds are fruits um, and then contained within there will be the seeds so if we if we cut this if we cut this in half obviously the the um, the skin is going to be a little bit tough hopefully I'm going to be able to get through it now this hasn't been stored in the house this has been stored in the uh, in the shed so this has had a bit of frost so you can actually see it's a good example you can actually see the the sort of the damage which has been caused to the to the flesh there you can see around the edge and that's where the it started to, um, to effectively started to rot if you like because the uh, what's happened is the water crystals have formed you know the water in there is frozen ice crystals have formed and they're like sharp knives going out if you like and they've damaged the cell structure in there as you can see there it's starting to um, to you know to go to go rotten but the main thing what I want to show you is inside the middle of it so obviously all of this flesh part here is edible um, and then in the middle what you'll get are the seeds now that's a that's a perfectly good example of a, um, a seed there so that's that looks very similar to a um, a pumpkin seed this is obviously a cross between a courgette and a pumpkin so that's why it's this funny shape but that's what the seeds will look like and that's why the you know the really easy for sort of children to grow because they're you know a good size that you can sort of hold on to so to plant these again all you need is um, obviously this, this pot's dirty so I have, a, I have a nice clean pot but you need a pot about that big um, and all you need to do is fill that with um, compost um, up to the top because you're going to firm it down in a minute anyway so good good quality compost in your pot and then with your finger you want to go down about sort of two inches about that much so put your, put your finger down in the pot like that and then all you need to do is plant the seed on its side so I'm holding the seed like that what I want to do is put that down inside so it's, it's sort of ending up like kind of like that so put that down inside the hole and then push the earth over it push the firm it down a little bit, now you put a little bit of tap water on that, not water out of the water but you don't want any bacteria in there till it's germinated but um, and then put that in a nice warm position and that will grow away quite nicely and all of the gourds are the same, all of the all of the seeds are in the middle just like that obviously cucumber and things like that, you know the seeds are in the middle as well um, slightly different structure but the principle is basically the same so to give you an idea of what the seeds look like um, I've got a few here now these are the seeds that I actually grew last year. Uh, so uh, let, let, let's let's start with the pumpkins first. So the pumpkins that I grew last year and I'll be growing this year uh, a big max. Now I got some really good pumpkins last year so that would be a variety that I'd recommend. I've actually bought some fresh seeds for this year because they were on offer. But uh, I've just brought these. This is the packet that I started with last year. So those are the, those are the pumpkin seed. Um, as you can see the yeah, so reasonable size seed and obviously you plant them sort of upright like that so they can break open and start so obviously the root and the the two um, seed leaves will actually come out of that um, seed so the so those are pumpkin seed um, and then what we've also got here these are these are butternut squash seeds so these are the seeds that I that I basically grew these from last year um, and the variety was winter butternut um, Butternut Butterfly F1 um, and as you'll see the seeds are very much the same they, they do vary in size a little bit but uh, as you can see the seeds are the same same type but they're slightly smaller they're about sort of I don't know about 12 12 millimeters or so across sort of half an inch across so that's um, those are butternut squash seeds and then these are courgette seeds, these are the ones I grew last year, these are um, goldener um, courgette. Again another gourd, uh, I'll just quickly show you the seeds of these. Um, again they're the same type of seed but they're slightly, slightly smaller again so they're about 10, 10 millimetres across. So that's what the seeds look like. And <coughs> finally um, the, uh, the birdhouse gourd seeds, now these seeds are slightly different um, but the but the they're inside the the, 
the bird escorts nevertheless so as you can see these are um, these are the seeds that um, are the bird house gourds and what you need to do with these this is the only differing point uh, with the pumpkin seeds and the courgette seeds and stuff you just put them straight in the ground with these what I advise you do if I can just take this one seed here you'll see that on top of the seeds you've got these like two little ears sticking up so it looks kind of like a teddy bear what you need to do is cut off um, those two corners be very careful you don't want to damage the the inside part of the seed all you want to do is take off those two little bits there and there uh, and you can do that one or two ways either get some sandpaper and file them off or just get a pair of nail scissors or nail clippers and just clip them off and then the seed will open up and you'll get much better germination rate from the seed so that's the best tip I can give you from them but they're um, they're the birdhouse gourd seeds now other seeds like um, melons and um, cucumbers and that look more like um, the sort of longer and thinner so they look more like a um, um, you know sort of less rounded the more sort of long and thin but the principle is pretty much the same uh, you know you grow them in exactly the same way so that's really quickly what the seeds look like and, and how to plant them obviously always remember to put a label in your pot and then just give that a bit of water what I suggest you do is um, um, get yourself a, a, a bottle of tap water give that a bit of water obviously put a label in there so you know what it is keep that reasonably warm and they they will germinate away as soon as they've germinated they will stand lower temperatures uh, but as long as it doesn't freeze you should be okay but you know really i would keep them in a warm area um you, you know to um to sort of guarantee success because if the if the uh, the plant does get cold you've got more chance of the the, the damp damping off effect which is where the uh, the shoot will, will get damaged at the bottom where it enters the ground and then the plant will die so that's that's what the seeds and uh, planting looks like so I hope this episode has been of some use to you please don't hesitate to put any comments or questions you've got below and I'll always get back to you and uh, me and Dorothy I'll see you on the next episode of Jim's Lama Garden mm -hmm.